All right, so I am back with another video. I've been kind of stagnant, even though I said I was going to post a whole bunch this month. I've been working a lot and doing a lot of, of stuff and sending out more than I've ever sent out in my entire... This month, literally, I've sent out more stuff than I've sent out in the past 15 years of doing things. So that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm really happy for that. But at the same time, I haven't recorded a bunch of it. So this guitar got sent to me from somebody to work on, and I figured I have to do a full-on build of it. Just from start to finish, full-on build. I do fast-forward through some parts. I do cut around on, like, all the, the null and, like, just, you know, me sitting here for five minutes while I stare at it. I'm cutting all that out. But the actual process of doing all the work, I recorded it all, uh, I believe, besides painting. But I have a video on painting, so go watch that if you need to know how I paint stuff. Um... But yeah, no, this was a really fun build. Like, it put my excitement at a literal 10 because for some reason I just really like people sending me stuff to work on and to send back versus, like, sourcing it myself. You know, there's gratification in both, but I don't know, just something about somebody sending me their own guitar that they've either worked on or doesn't work or just, hey, like, it's cheaper to send me a guitar and then I build it, then I send it back versus me sourcing everything myself. Um, so it's a cost-saving measure. It's It doesn't diminish my parts. It doesn't diminish my capabilities at all. Like, i not having to, like, go on eBay or, or random Facebook Marketplace for things. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, as always, I'm going to live narrate this as we go along. So there will be some parts where I'm kind of just rambling about stuff, but you guys seem to like that. And uh, most likely I'll do timestamps of what parts that I'm doing as we go. But, uh, yeah, get into it. So this package showed up. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the user's name. At least, it, I'm sure I do, but I don't want to butcher it, so I'm just going to you know, like put it on screen or something. So they sent me their Explorer for 360. Uh, it was, in my, in my opinion, one of the best shaped guitars I've ever seen in the past year or two. It had some yellowing on the plastic, but as for, like, dings and scratches and stuff, it, none. There was not a single little scratch. There wasn't any, um, just anything that I would consider bad. Like, if I were to sell this thing, I would put in great, fantastic condition. Um, the frets were amazing in condition. Like, everything was just, besides missing some parts, like the, the uh, strap holders and a bunch of screws and stuff, which is totally fixable and, and replaceable. The guitar itself was just in phenomenal shape. Now, right off the bat, you'll see here, I noticed that the wires were not tinned on the cable, the original cable. And when you don't tin the wires, the solder does not flow properly. So these were not getting the right connection to the board. And then, um, you know, that obviously translates to the buttons not working. So that's not a good thing. And I wound up just taking the ribbon cable out and putting my own color-coded ribbon cable in. It makes it easier to check for, um, you know, not check for, but it makes it easier just to wire things up when it's all color coded versus like, oh, is this common? Is this this? You know, um, it, it looked like this person wired it just fine, like pin for pin. But uh, the, the wires were just not solid connection. Um, I looked into it. I was going to replace these yellow with the orange, but they're all 70 gram. So it really didn't matter. It's just more the sound that they produce. One is um, uh, not tactile. One is linear. One's not. The blue are tactile. Um, the yellow, I forget what they are. I just had the website up. But basically, I did not have to replace the switches at all. And you'll see here on Xpatter, only two of them worked. Mainly because those wires were just not fully connected in there. Um, I had thought that there was something wrong with the board. Because I was like, well, the wires look like they're wired fine. So what's the problem, you know? Ah, uh, excuse me, I need to get some drink. It's going to be a long, long, long narration. So yeah, so what I initially decided to do was just take the whole thing apart, get all the components out of it, and then just clean the crap out of it. I sat there and I got my alcohol out, I got my, I got a toothbrush for cleaning things, I got a rag, and uh, really just did, you know, went to town on cleaning which turned the already great shaped guitar into just, tr honestly, honestly, all hands on deck. Besides the guitar that I have in a box that I believe has never been played or at least very minimally play, pay, played, and I paid 
way too much money for it in the original box. Like, we're talking, I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for it because it was that expensive. But when you find new old stock and stuff like that, like, it, the guitar was in the original plastic when I bought it kind of thing. So I found a new old stock Explorer. That obviously, even my, myself, I played it like once ever. Um, this is the only other guitar that I've seen in as good a shape or close to that. And um, whatever this person paid or how they sourced it or whatever, just round of applause. I'm thoroughly shocked and almost jealous that they have such a great shape Guitar Hero controller that um, really is dated um, at least, it could be at least 15 years old, um, but it's probably a little bit newer than that because they obviously made the guitars longer than um, they made the games for it. Like, the Explorers, I'm sure they stopped making them after a while, but let's say they made the Explorers well into Guitar Hero 3 because they had the PC models and stuff, which, by the way, side note here as I'm taking this thing apart, if anybody has the box or knows where to get a box for the Guitar Hero 3 PC Explorer, I will literally pay a great amount of money for that. Or the, um, the Aerosmith box as well. I, at one point in time, had both the Aerosmith and the Guitar Hero 3 boxes with the Explorer. I had my mom buy them for me. Um, she, one day she's like, hey, we can go to the beach or we can get you uh, the controller, you know. And this is when, like, PC customs were really, like, not a thing, but I knew about them, and uh, I was just like, no, like, I need this, because I cared about the box more than anything. I needed the box that said, like, Guitar Hero 3 with the Explorer on the box, this is for PC and Mac, because most people associate the Explorer with Guitar Hero 2 for 360. So having those boxes is, like, more awesome than anything else to me and if you guys have seen the few videos i've posted in my room i love collecting the guitar boxes i think uh it's really fun and awesome and it's a big part of my collection as well as having the guitars like as of right now i have one of every single guitar and i would like to have maybe not one of every box but at least the majority of boxes and um, what's cool too is i actually have the original guitars in the boxes too like i talk about the explorer for guitar hero 2 I actually think my Explorer box is no... Uh, no, it is for Guitar Hero 2. But my other ones are, like, no game type. They're just unbranded. They're still official, you know? But they're not associated with a game. Like, I have a Guitar Hero 1 Black SG that doesn't have, like, the game on the box, you know? But it's in the box. I have uh, another SG that's in the box. I've got a couple other guitar, like the Wireless Red Octane for PS2. Um, that's in the box. Just, you know, I like collecting the boxes, I like collecting guitars, as people obviously know. Um, and kind of back into it, what I'm doing here with my razor blade is there was a lot of flashing on this guitar. Um, I'm not sure if other guitars have flashing like this. Not, I don't think I've ever cared to look, because this one was like a full-on, I'm gonna like, not only restore and refurbish, like I'm gonna make this the best thing I've ever made. Because, uh, without getting into the details, because they're, you know, private details between me and the, the buyers, um, for what this person is paying me, um, which I think is very reasonable, uh, I wanted to go above and beyond that more than just like, yeah, I milled out some frets for you and I put a USB port in there, then that's, that's it. So I wanted to make sure that I was going above and beyond, and so I figured, cut all the flashing off, all the little nicks and, and things that are not like blemishes but just a part of the molding process um that's why you'll see me like with this toothbrush i just get into every little nook and cranny i clean the inside the outside um, i really took my time um to to make sure that i was doing what i could you know to to clean it all off like on the bottom of the body the like the back half of the body i actually went along the ridge and cleaned all that off pretty well um I don't know, I just, I'm still, still shocked at how great this guitar came out. Uh, even before I started cleaning it, you know. And now, maybe if I had more time with it and it was summer or I had some sun, you know. It was nice the past few days, but the Chicago falls and winters are just, they're not harsh so much besides like a few negative 40 degree days, which is like two a year, which isn't that bad. We just don't get much sun in the fall and winter. Uh, at least not warm sun, that would really matter. But I would love to do some peroxide on this guitar and, like, really 
clean up the yellowing. Um, it, it's one of those guitars that I wouldn't even paint, to be honest. Like, I did paint the pickguard, as you'll see in a little bit, but I probably wouldn't even paint it because it's just in that good a shape. Um, but it would not be nice to take, like, let's say 1,500, 2,000 grit sandpaper, just smooth down the whole body and all, but that comes with its own problems where I really only sand down if I'm going to be painting. So I just did the best that I could, cleaned up all the cracks, got all the, the grit and, you know, grime that developed over the years. You'll see here that in the number two for the guide button, as well as the start and select, there was um, some grime in between the, the letterings and number. So I just went, you know, the extra mile and I kind of scraped at it a little bit. The fret holes were the worst, the, um, really just the grime. It was pretty thick and kind of gross, so I went in there and I uh, I cleaned it up pretty well. And then off camera, I actually took my knife, kind of what I'm doing here, and I just scraped the inside of the fret holes. That way there wouldn't be any, you know... My, my whole goal when I build guitars, for myself or for others, is like, I want, whether it's the most crazy mod... Or even just a refurbish, um, simple, even though there's some cool modded stuff like with the frets and USB port and stuff on this, it's ultimately pretty simple. And uh, I want it to look store-bought. Like, I care about getting my sharp right angle lines, uh, or my like my corners, getting really straight lines. Like, I just, I go above and beyond because, I don't know, it's just my thing. I care about quality a lot. In my job, I build automation machines and I'm electrical at it. So, I do a lot of cable management. And with my cable management, I get compliments from, like, the world's best engineers. And I can't tell you how amazing it feels to have a person who's, like, a really top quality, like, sought-after engineer making, like, upwards of 200 grand a year tell me, man, you are just, like, real big into quality. And I, and I appreciate that because it, anybody can strip wire, anybody can terminate wire, anybody can throw a label on stuff, anybody can take a meter, as I'm doing here, and pin out things you know and, and write a little list of what the pinouts are so what really stands me apart is that i just care about quality to a really heightened level almost to a detriment like there's some times where i get in not so much in trouble but get a little talking to they're like hey man like you're taking three extra days than everybody else is doing my argument being well my machine <laughs> looks 10 times better than theirs and also mine's mine don't break down and they work really well and there's no troubleshooting and, and whatnot but I digress, you know, basically I care about quality a lot. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically pinning out which um, wires or which pins I need to go to which wire for the USB port. So basically I've done at this point from my recollection, seven USB-C mods and two micro USB mods. Now what that has entailed in the past is I take like a phone USB battery pack, like those cheaper, like, you know, cheapo ones that you buy at like Walgreens at the checkout for like 10 whole bucks, you know, and um, what I do is I put that in the guitar, I remove the, the AA battery pack, and then I put in these, these uh, USB ports for charging. That's all I've ever done. I've never done a data cable before. <clears throat> excuse me I've never done a data cable before so this was my first data cable guitar mod and with this board I have here I noticed that when you had the USB cable plugged in in one direction it would ring out to certain pins and the other direction it would ring out to the other half of the of the pins so what I'm doing here is I'm basically just bridging the gap between the two so regardless of how you plug it in in either direction it'll work I figured it would be kind of annoying and just really not professional if I were to go like, oh, here's your guitar with um, USB, but also make sure that you plug the USB in the right way or else it's not going to work. So I went the extra little bit and I just, um, man, my furnace is loud. Oh boy. Hey, at least I have a furnace in my garage. I'm like a lot of people that don't, so I'm privileged with that, I'll say. Um... But it's definitely loud, I'll say that. So hopefully it doesn't translate too much onto audio. But yeah, so basically I'm going D plus to D plus, and then D minus to D minus. It's weird because on either side of the board they're not equal. Like, they're in, they're opposite each other. So I had to make like a little cross, uh, you know, around them. No big deal. 
but uh, it's just weird. I thought that was kind of odd. I also thought it was odd that it's different. You know, like I get that the top set of pins on the cable go to the the one side and the bottom set goes to the other side. It's just weird that they're not all direct. I'm not sure, you know, how to explain it other than that. Maybe there's a reason for it. I mean, this is kind of like a breakout board of sorts, but, you know. <clears throat> so now I'm doing the uh, green wire. I actually tried to match the same green and white. Oh, and because I mentioned earlier about the tinning of wires, um, when you're soldering stuff, you definitely want to pre-solder your wire. That way the solder will just flow into it and you don't get a cold solder. Cold solder meaning that the, the connection is just not solid. And even if it looks like it is, generally it's not. So pre-tinning, pre-soldering your wires really helps out in this uh, department. Also what I did was I bent, once I shoved the wire through, I bent it to kind of like hug it into the board so it wouldn't fall out. And then like there I cut off the excess because, you know, why not? Ugh. And then here's where you'll see that X going on. And I also obviously cut too long because I want it to be stuck in there more. And then I'll just cut the excess off. Um, one thing that I do want to say because I, I've watched a lot of videos recently on Guitar Hero mods. And I actually really want to do um, a video on like rating Guitar Hero controller mods and like homemade controllers and stuff. Because... There's a lot of them. I mean, there have been a lot of people that make custom controllers or modded controllers of the sort. And not that I'm an expert in the field. Like, I mean, I am an expert in my eyes, but I'm not like a, an authority rather. Um, so I'm not going to like be a jerk and be like, well, this person sucks and this person doesn't or I'm the best or any of that. It's just I would like to watch people and just give like an honest review of, you know, what it looks like, you know, Without being a jerk or being biased about it. Uh, one second. <clears throat> I feel this cough keep on creeping up, so I'm going to drink my water. Uh, which is just amazing. I found this stuff at Walgreens that's just sparkling water, and it's next to liquid death. It's like the best sparkling water I've ever had in my life. But yeah, now I'm making the data cable, or... Not so much data cable, but the cable that will go to the XP board. And another cool thing with that, now that this guitar doesn't have uh, a USB cable, like the, the stock USB cable with the breakaway at the end, I now have what is probably my best USB cable for a future guitar. So if I were to do another Explorer or like Explorer and Mod, um, you know, throwing the guts into another guitar, I have... I'm looking at it right now. It's just, it's so impressive how clean and not kinked, not stripped, no damage. Just, it, if you told me this guitar sat in a box for the past 15 years and he just pulled it out for this, I would totally believe you. Besides the yellowing of it all. Another thing too, um, I mentioned later on in the video, but obviously it's all muted because I'm doing a voiceover. When I do my solder, I want to make sure that the solder or the wire itself is kind of like hugged and engulfed, if that's the right word I'm looking for, engulfed in the solder itself. I feel like you get the best connection when uh, embedded. Embedded is probably a better word. When the wire is truly embedded into the solder, if it's just sitting on top and it's connected, no big deal. But you'll even see right here where you could still see the wire on top of the solder, I wanted the solder to fulfill it and, and, and be around it. It just ensures a really solid connection, and in the realm of things, I like explaining why I do things and, you know, what I do and what which way. So now what I'm doing is I'm verifying between um, both ends, like this data cable that I just have that I cut the end off of, as well as the cord that's going to go into the XP board. Oh, and now that I have the board, I'm figuring out where to put the USB port. And at this point, I figured I couldn't put it where the phone jack went. I could put it where the original 
um, cable came out of, but it would be in the way if you're sitting down. And then I got a great idea, and I figured I'd message them. I'm like, hey, like, you don't play lefty by chance, do you? And just to make sure. And thank thankfully, they got back to me within, like, two minutes. And they're like, no, actually, even though I'm right-handed, I play lefty. And I'm just like, oh, that's weird, because that's, that's me right there, in a nutshell. I am right-handed by birth. Uh, I taught myself to be ambidextrous when I was in fifth grade just because I wanted to be that weird kid who could write with both hands, and it's translated into a lot where, for some reason, because of that, I just have become more ambidextrous in life, and I have, you know, forced myself to use the left side of my body more than not. Um, so it's like, yeah, like, I'm a right-handed person who plays lefty as well, more because I broke my wrist when I was in second grade, and I can't bend it. Uh, more than a, like a more than half of I can the right hand, so it's just really uncomfortable for me to play right-handed. Um, so, anyways, I decided because they're lefty that I would put the USB cable down at the bottom on the this side, and here's me just marking off the the cutout for it. Oh, another thing to mention too, oh, excuse me, is how I get my straight edges in my corners. And basically, as you see there, I use my Dremel tool to, to notch it and do the initial part. And then I use a middle-of-the-road sharp blade. It's not dull. It's not sharp. Um, it's just perfect for doing plastic. So I'm able to then shape the plastic itself to, you know, have nice, flat, and straight edges. Again, I just, I care about it looking real well. Um, as you can see, there's a little blurry, but it's pretty straight, which I was happy about. Yeah, i tired. So I got another Explorer, and I actually cut off uh, a peg. I believe I took off a peg from the deep, uh, like the guide board, like the main board, um, just the one that everything sits on. And I just cut it out, and it was long enough, or rather deep enough, to, to hold up the board. But because the hole in the board is smaller than the original hole, I basically shaved off the outside of the hole a little bit. Just enough to make it fit. And then from there, I started shaving off the bottom of the standoff, you know, getting it so it would be flush and level. Then once I did that, uh, I just used a standard screw because, you know, why not? But once I did that, I actually got my epoxy out and I mixed it all. It took me a, a minute or two to get it lined up right, you know, to more or less set. So I used some duct tape to make sure it was going to stay in place while it was the glue was drying. I don't know. It, is epoxy glue? I don't know if it really is. It's an adhesive of sorts, but it's not really glue. It's more like magic. I'm telling you, epoxy and Bondo are like my two trade secrets that I'm totally open about. <laughs> I may not show full detail on how I use Bondo, which I will. I, I will definitely show how I do Bondo. But um, epoxy is just like my best friend when it comes to all my mods. I, I've literally glued two pieces of plastic together. And after it cured, I was like, I want to see how strong it is. And I bent the plastic right where it was, um, you know, welded together, let's say, with the epoxy. And it wound up breaking elsewhere. That's how strong this stuff is. It's just, it is pure magic. I've been using it for, I want to say, seven or eight years now um, on most of my stuff. I saw some model car guys doing it, like, uh, not model car guys, uh, die cast car guys. They were, like, making, like, expansions or, like, mods to their little die-cast cars. And I was like, well, if you can do that to a die-cast car, I could probably use that for Guitar Hero controllers. And I've actually used it for other controllers, too. I've got, like, an Xbox 360 Elite controller that has, like, the tiltable or spinnable D-pad. And um, I threw some Xbox One joysticks on it because I just like the, the smallness and the feel of those. But they were really loose and they were fl fl falling all over the place so I epoxied that into place and the, it's my daily controller 
Um, even like on PC, I don't play with my Xbox One controller anymore on PC. I play with a 360 controller with, through my adapter. So uh, here, because, you know, back to it, you can see the epoxy was all done there. Um, it says five minute, but it usually takes a few hours, upwards of a day to like harden and cure, which doesn't bother me. I have time on my hands. Now I believe while I'm waiting for that to cure, um, I'm going to do the fretboard. The one thing I mentioned at the start about the guitar not registering the, the buttons, I just, I'm not against using the original cable, but I'm also just not for it. Um, the more you cut it, the more tight it's going to be. And I don't know, I'm just, I have a whole bunch of the ribbon cable. I bought like a 25 foot piece online and I had a whole bunch from my last job. Basically every machine, like I built these little printers and every machine that had a little printer would require like six inches of this ribbon cable. And because our engineers weren't the smartest, they literally ordered a 35 foot ribbon cable, every freaking printer. So, and being stubborn, um, the other builders wouldn't use like one of them and then throw the rest in like a bin. They would literally just cut off six inches every single time. So I got the bright idea. I was like, well, if a whole bunch of these went missing, I don't think anyone's going to care. And they didn't. And so <laughs> who cares? And then I uh, basically wound up with a whole bunch of ribbon cables. And I think it's universal in a way because the whammies and even like other various electronics I've taken apart over the years use the same color code in the same order, ribbon cable, and the same gauge and all. So it must just be like a standard for small electronics to use this. Here I'm just verifying that the board is the same. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry that I keep on yawning. But because the Explorer has two different board styles, which... One of which I've only seen like twice, and the other one is way more common, which is this style. Um, it's still nice to just know that it's all the same, and that you don't want to differ differentiate. So here I'm more for myself, just a mental. Um, there I'm putting the numbers of each. That way I can match it to the board. Also, if anyone has any um. Not like so much if you have it, but if you have an idea of a better clamping system or you know of a better clamping system, let me know. These alligator clips aren't bad. I just, it's the one I've had since I was like 17 when I started doing, um, when I started going to trade school for doing like small circuit boards and stuff. And so it's just the one I've had for the past 13 years and uh, it works and all, but it's kind of flimsy. It moves around too much. And I know there's better methods on how to clamp anything down. There's got to be like a suction cup of sorts and like not alligator clips that can really hold boards and things in place. So here, even though I could have used my solder sucker and sucked all the solder out and shoved the wires back through the holes, I just, I don't do that. Um, it, take it for what it is. It, it may be improper to some people's mindset, but it's not to mine. I don't like putting it through the holes. Uh, I feel like it just creates more of a possible break where the way I solder, I do it on top of the contact pad. And frankly, as long as you hug that solder, like I had mentioned before, where you really just encase the whole wire into the solder, you're getting a really solid connection anyways. Uh, and I think quite a few times throughout the video, the camera goes a little haywire, but it's getting better from the first time I recorded with this. Also to mention here, um, for some people, it's probably better to cut the ribbon cable about an inch to two inches away from the board and then solder those wires together um, and just use like heat shrink. I mean, if you don't have heat shrink, electrical tape is fine as long as you isolate the individual strands of wires. Um, and I don't recommend soldering to the board directly. I do because I've just been doing it a long time. And I have experience in that. 
Um, I also know that I'm not going to burn a board out because I use a specific temperature on my solder station where some people don't have a solder station. They just have a soldering pen or like a gun, which um, doesn't have like a variable controller for the heat. Um, and just in general, if you put the heat on it too long, you really can burn a board out. So as much as I'm showing what I'm doing, this is the one time I would say don't copy verbatim what I'm doing here. Um, and listen to my advice of just cutting it back a little bit and soldering it to the wires themselves. Because if you mess up the wires, you can always replace the wires. But if you mess up the board, you basically gotta buy another guitar. And let me tell you, back in the day when guitars were literally given to me for free, it was no big deal. I, I had friends and friends' parents just be like, Nick, you play this game, you like it, no one's played it in forever, take this guitar out of my house, it's just collecting dust. Now, that that's not the case, people who go to Goodwill and they buy a guitar for 99 cents are like, I can sell this for $100! Uh, you know, I'm sorry, I get, as nice as I am, I get really pissy with people who try to sell Guitar Hero controllers for a lot of money when they have no idea what they're talking about. I prefer the people who are like, I don't know what this is, I don't know if it works, 20 bucks. And then I plug it in and it works perfectly fine. But that's more just my personal gripe with it. It's not so much people, it's more just that hustle where it's like, I have to make every possible penny. And anybody who knows me knows that like I refuse to be that way. I refuse to be a money whore. I don't know, it's just... I know money makes the world go round, but that's why I got a career that I thoroughly enjoy and that pays more than my bills and it gives me extra money and stuff and when I'm unemployed like I am right now I don't have to super sweat it and freak out about every little thing like now more than ever I should be charging the most because I'm out of work but at the same time it's just not it's not me that's it's not my prerogative my prerogative is to have fun building stuff and really more or less um, I don't charge for my labor at all on anything um, I just charge for, like, the, the parts. I mean, I guess you could argue with this build, I'm charging for my labor because, you know, I took the time to do it. But if you were to take, like, the amount of hours I spend on something versus the return, basically, it's, it's nothing. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I have this weird thing of people charging way too much for, for something that I don't have to charge that much for, you know. But again, back to the video because I'm just rambling again. <laughs> um, I mean, it's really not much. I'm just, I'm just soldering all the the board pieces together. Here, I'm getting the length for the ribbon cable from the fret button to the fret buttons to the main board. And what I generally do is I'll go like a little bit in either the blue fret or like into the blue fret, and then I'll fish it through and figure out where I want it to go exactly. That way if there's ever any issues, I'm not replacing a whole cable, I just have to strip back a little bit more. I also use, generally, this time I use 9, but generally I use 10 wires on an 8 wire um, board, and I'll use 8 wires on a 6 wire board. That just gives you 2 spares to mess around with. And if there's ever a problem or anything, clean up and Fixing it is not only quick, uh, I should say fixing it is quick and the cleanup is is nice because it's still a part of that same ribbon. I don't have just one individual wire going across the board. Uh, anybody want to become my cameraman for like free? Just hang out with me in my garage and just record me. <laughs> record, record me, you know, like that or how can I get a monitor. I've got this little 7-inch monitor I use for OBS and for video editing that I have on my, my table here, and it's great. I would just like to know how I can get that to be on, like, my phone videos, um, so then I can always see what I'm doing, because sometimes, like, I just don't see that I'm in the way or that things are blurry, and I'm sure it's no big deal, but I really care about professionalism and I care about video quality. I mean, hell, I spend, like, seven to eight hours editing a video sometimes. I mean, this one took me a while. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It was just a lot of cutting and getting rid of the nonsense. But thankfully, I did everything in one go. So there wasn't, like, multiple days of footage or anything like that. Also, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but because we're here and because some people don't watch all of my videos, 
uh, I usually cut or strip back more than I need on all the individual wires. I'm not sure really why I do it other than I found that if I strip it really short, it I kind of singe the insulation back a little bit versus if I have a nice, you know, long, I'll say double the length that I need. It doesn't do that as much. And um, then I just cut off the little, you know, like half of it, little excess that I have. Uh, and here's where my ambidextry, or whatever the plural word would be for it, um, or ambidextrous skills, rather, comes into play. Because I pretty much soldered this all left-handed. And again, with the color codes, it's really nice because not only can I quick reference, like, oh, I did this color to that color, they're all in order, and I generally do the same colors each time. That way it's just easy for muscle memory. But it's just nice, like I said before, as, as using the regular ribbon cable, that's, it's not cheap, but, I mean, come on, it, it probably cost more to make them colored than not, so, of course, they're going to go the cheapest route. What, efficiency is all about being able to do things over and over and over in a consistent basis, but also doing it cheaply as possible. Or I should say in as inexpensive as possible. I will say that um, Guitar Hero controllers are among the most impressive longevity type anything I've ever met, came across. Next to like old Xbox controllers and old PS2 controllers, nothing holds up like a Guitar Hero controller. Like even let's say your Strumbar goes out. I replaced the one switch. I replaced both switches. That thing is still just going to rock on. Like, the frets don't... Unless you're really, really abusing your guitar, they just last. The, that silicone pad just lasts well. Um, the the buttons, like, the, the plastic of it all. Besides, like, the face plates wearing down, you're not actually wearing down the plastic. You're just wearing the, the paint or the finish off, you know? So I got to give it to them that whoever engineered and designed these things um, and then picked like the plastics they use and stuff. I mean, come on, take a third party guitar, for instance. Third party guitars were made so cheaply, not inexpensively, but so cheaply that they're just trash. It's, they fall apart. They're brittle. They're garbage. The only couple that I've ever found that I really like are the Flying V's. And even then, I replace all the components in them <laughs> besides, like, the physical strum bar that I also heavily modify. So, I mean, I don't have to do that with a Guitar Hero, like, official controller. Besides, like, the cool things like, oh, we're going to put some mechanical frets in or I'm going to change, like, the button structure or paint them or whatever. Like, even the Arduino guitars, it's cool. I'm, I'm hopefully going to get into that when I break my whatever, my... Um, aversion to it now before I keep on rambling the first three on the right like the red orange and yellow are not fully like hugged by the solder so I actually go back in there and I just put a little bit more on it so it can really get a better connection I mean I'm sure that's good enough but good enough to me isn't good enough like good enough is is half-assed oh it works cool I want it to last I want it to be better I want it to be the best that it can be, you know. So I just made sure. And I'm doing this all like no microscope, no nothing, just with my glasses. So I got to give it up to myself, even though it's not 100%. It's it's the best I could get away with with what I had. And then I just strip back all the wire. I strip these ones more individually than the rest. And uh, that's because I have the big screw peg for the back of the neck that I have to, uh, you know, miss so it doesn't get pinched. I can't tell you in the back in the day, not so much now because I don't do as many, like, guitar, you know, like the guitars that come in and then I send them back out. I do a lot of in-house work, then send it out. But back in the day when I would fix, like, my friend's guitars and stuff and, like, things that, they're, that they would work on or, like, their older brothers would work on... Um, a lot of times, they would have pinched wires inside because they would just slap it all together and throw the casing back on and then just start screwing down, not realizing, like, 
why is the screw so has so much resistance? That's weird. But they would never consider that. Then I would sit there in my garage back before I had good soldering skills and the proper tools, and I would figure out how to, you know, how to make it work. Here's another example of the whole, like, I need a better clamping system. This thing is just all weaving and bopping around. Oh, Twitter, can you leave me alone for half a second? Oof. Fun stuff. I also should probably start watching TV and movies with some headphones as I'm building things. Because really the main reason why I do voiceovers is because I always have something going on in the background that will either get me copyright claimed or just, yeah, I'm talking, but you just, you hear like, it's always sunny and people like swearing or like the, the, like two podcasts I listen to, which one is called your mom's house. Um, and it's basically all just like grotesque and really raunchy stuff. So I don't know. I just, it doesn't play well, but Maybe if I just threw in my wireless earbuds and then worked and worked, uh, talked while I worked, I could do a little bit better. But you know what? Oh, I've come to enjoy what I do. And honestly, um, there's no better way for me to like finalize an edit of a video than watching the whole thing in one go. Like, you know, I, I edit and I watch as I go along. But there may be some stuff that I miss, or something that I that I mess up, or whatever it is, or like I added something, or I didn't cut something quick enough, or what, you know, again, whatever it is. Sometimes, I don't uh, catch everything in the edit. So instead of uploading it to YouTube and having somebody comment like, hey man, like what's up with this one random part? Instead, instead uh, I get to watch the whole thing in one sitting and go along with it. Almost like a DVD commentary. Sorry, my... Oh, yeah. Important life stuff. Now, what would be cooler, though, is if I got, like, a bunch of other people <laughs> to do live commentary with me. Oh, and hey, there's my little 7-inch screen that I've had for 12 years, or 10 years, rather. Just chilling there with OBS open. I wound up recording some Roblox with my kid that night that I did this video, so it was nice that I had uh, OBS open still. And I think at this point, it's just a matter of putting the whole guitar back together. Um, I gotta, obviously, solder the connector on, the USB connector. Um, but, ultimately done. Uh, I think, I, I'm not sure if I painted at this point, or if I didn't. And also, I do want to mention, because I know I mentioned it, uh, like, right there. I don't just do the screws in any or like any normal order I do them crisscrossed that way the screws themselves suck in the plastic and it's not going to be off or janky or anything I do the same for the face plate or the pick guards and stuff like that uh, it's just in general I do that for anything that has multiple screws I'll go corner to corner then I'll go like across then corner to corner again do it a little bit more cleanup on that d-pad Now, somebody did comment on one of my old videos. They were like, it says alcohol, but it says fuel on it, too. I know it says fuel, but denatured alcohol is a really great cleaner, just as isopropyl is. I mean, isopropyl 99 may be better. Um, and I say maybe, I know it's better. But for the price of the two, uh, denatured alcohol, that can right there, is pretty cheap, or at least was when I was buying it way back when. The can is now um, pretty much empty. So I'll have to do something about that and probably buy isopropyl, but they both work really well for cleaning stuff. And, uh, I just, 
I've been using denatured alcohol my whole life. It's what my old man got me into, so it's kind of just a habitual, like, uh, not habitual, more like traditional type thing. I just, I do it because that's what I'm used to. Uh, uh, so yeah, now I get this. Oh, and, uh, one wire I added after the fact, I added a black shield wire. It's not fully necessary. I've done cables without it all the time, but I figured the, the board has this shield on it, which just ties back to the ground. Um, but I might as well throw it on there. Here I'm cutting, not so much flush, but just a little bit past flush. That way I still see the color code in case I hadn't written it down. Um, if I had a hot solder blower, I forget what you call them. Um, but it's basically just like a mini heat gun. If I had one of those, I would probably remove the connector to get altogether. But because I don't, it's too risky to try to heat up all those individual pads and pull the connector out. So I just left it. And I think um, from here it's just a matter of putting some screws in and then soldering it all up. Oh my gosh, I am not tired. At least I don't feel tired, but I'm yawning up a storm. And because I don't drink caffeine or sugar, maybe that's the problem. Maybe I gotta start drinking some caffeine or sugar. I just, I don't know, I have... I'm such a weird person. I have this, like, aversion to doing things that are really popular. Just like I got all upset about the people who sell thrift shop things on eBay for way too much money. I don't like soda. Like, I just... I mean, I'm sure at one point in my life I loved soda and all. And Pepsi was the shit. Mountain Dew is the shit. It's just, like, people are so freaking addicted to sugar that I just can't do it. Like, I love my sparkling water with no anything in it. Like, one time I went to Walmart... And I picked up this uh, Polar. It's a really good brand. Um, no, sorry. It was this the Walmart brand, Sam's. And uh, I picked up a thing of, like, black cherry. It just said, like, sparkling water. So I get it. I get home and I'm like, that tastes funny. It has a weird aftertaste. I look at it. Aspartame. I'm like, I don't, I don't want that. I want, like, literally just water. I want, like, LaCroix. Just give me some water and, like, put a lime a mile away from it <laughs> there's so many jokes about uh sparkling water but like i just i really do love it i love the sensation like the the bubbliness in my mouth with a little bit of something i just i don't know like music movies tv food liquids um controllers i just i am such a big disliker of things that are overly popular for bad reasons like it some things I'll buy into, like I watched all of Dahmer, it was really popular, and it was, it was decent enough, kind of weird, and definitely scarring, um, there's that brand new cable I was talking about, or like new, but yeah, I just, I like being really weird and different, and a part of my personality is like, just being weird and different, oh hey, my aunt called me. Another reason why it's nice to do voiceovers after the fact, I can talk on the phone the whole time. That's another thing. Even though I'm really, maybe like two people in the community probably hate my guts. One for totally un, I don't know, they need to tell me why they hate me for me to understand, because I don't. And the other one, Friff, I don't think he hates my guts, but I just don't think he, like, acknowledges my existence. And I, I feel him on that. I... I built him a guitar, um, and the second he got it, the strum bar went out, um, because I'm not a lefty, so I, I mean, I am a lefty, I'm not right-handed, so I, I couldn't test the, all the possibilities it would break or not work, and the strum bar stopped working right when he got it, um, and then I figured, hey, like, if you pay for shipping, I'll send you another guitar, I was at a really bad point in my life, so I got the 35 bucks for shipping, and then I just, I never sent the guitar. And it's probably too late now to, like, it's never too late, don't get me wrong. 
but I go into like so many of his streams and I comment on it. Even when I'm the only one like there at the start, he like just refuses to acknowledge my existence. And so I get that. Whether he hates me or just has a sour taste in his mouth, um, it definitely hurts my feelings more. Than my I hurt my own feelings. It's not, hey, you should like me even though I screwed you over. No, I, I get that. I get where he's coming from. He's never explicitly said anything about it, but he just doesn't acknowledge me. Um, and that's, that's just sad. I try to be such a nice, wholesome person in the community. Um, but with that said, like, I just, I don't, I don't talk to people, you know, like besides you random guys messaging me to build stuff, like I don't have conversations with people in the community. I don't really talk to anybody um, besides my close, like personal friends. I just, I'm a hermit crab, man. I, I just stick to myself. Here I decided to replace the whammy bar because it was so flimsy and again, this person is a left-handed, or lefty player, not left-handed, um, that it's unacceptable to have a whammy bar that's all flimsy and spins around it really easily, because it's going to get in your way. So I decided to replace it with a better one, and while it was in really good shape, um, especially the, I don't know what you call it, I call it a nub, but the rubberized tip, um, it was in really good shape, but it was definitely kind of like white and hazy from just being old. So I had the idea, we're going to paint that. Since I had to paint the faceplate, I keep on calling it a faceplate. Since I had to paint the pickguard anyways, I figured why not do um, the whammy bar as well. Which turned out pretty great, it, it, I, I will say. Um, the clear coat on one half of the whammy kind of like, I wouldn't say it bubbled up, but it kind of like just made a weird look. But it doesn't defeat the overall color. Like painting it black, was, even though it's black. Painting it black to match the pit guard was a great uh, choice, I feel. Um, and if I wasn't trying to speedrun this build, I would have taken the extra steps to to really make it like perfect. But for what it is, it, it's great. Now, the whammy bar, um, I don't know if it was squeaking or what, but they all squeak. And it, some people think it's the switches that squeak. It's not. It's the bar itself squeaking against the plastic. Because some of them have like rubber inserts and some have plastic inserts. Uh, the rubber ones are kind of few and far between, so it's generally going to be a plastic insert. So I just put a bunch more uh, grease on the inside and outside and just worked it back and forth into the hole. That'll make the strum bar feel a little bit better. It'll kind of bridge any gaps that have been created over the years of playing it. If it has, again, I don't know if this guitar has ever played. It just It's in that good a shape. And, uh, so yeah, so I decided to grease the, the strum bar, like the steel bar itself again, and throw all that back together. You'll see here again, I do that, uh, technique of going quarter to quarter. I, I kind of learned that from putting car tires on, like rims for cars where you don't want to do it all in like an order because it's not going to uh, evil, even out the pressure well enough. Um, so I just, I always say do it that way, even if it's excessive, whatever. So now I just got to find a peg for the strap and I got to cut the, got to cut out a little bit of space for the, um, the USB port. And then pretty much wait for the paint to dry and put it all back together. Again, here with my Dremel, I kind of just go in close enough to the body. But then I take my razor blade and I really get in there, straighten those corners off, and then I get nice and flush to the, the body itself. Again, a really cool feature. Besides the fact that I didn't have like a 10 foot USB C cable, which I would recommend this person get. I mean, six feet is probably long enough, but a 10 foot USB C cable, and like two of them, would be great. Because this port it will most likely hold up for a long, long time, um, but the cables may not. Especially, I would say a brand new cable would pair well with this. That's what I did. I used one of my newest cables for testing. And at this point, paint is all done. I, I came back the next morning 
Usually I wait like two whole days for a paint to dry, but the clear coat usually dries and cures pretty well. So as long as I'm not like manhandling it too much and putting a lot of pressure on it, it's no big deal. So you'll see here, I generally am touching, trying to, for the most part, touch the, the circle on the end that wasn't painted. Like here, you'll see me catch myself. I'm like, ah, don't put pressure on that. But the clear coat generally helps a lot. I guess I should call it a top coat. I got corrected in my video on how to paint stuff. It is clear coat paint, but it's a top coat. So I'm get that in there. Spring's really nice. The the lights in my garage kind of don't do these things justice, especially this pit guard, because my fingerprints were all over it. And I've wiped it down since that I, you know, after I put it all together, but it does almost look like there's a blemish on it there for a while. Now, also the trick I used here is I didn't push pressure on the faceplate. Again, I keep on calling you the freaking faceplate. I'm the pick guard. Um, I didn't put pressure on the pick guard and force it into the hole. I just kind of gently placed it in there. And then I did the screws a little bit here, a little bit there, back and forth until it sucked in the pick guard. That way I'm not putting too much pressure on the 100% not cured paint. I just figured it was, it's the first time I've ever done that. Usually I'll just wait like four days and not touch anything that's painted. But I figured, you know what? get this thing done quicker than not and you know I most likely won't mess it up if I don't touch it too much so now it's just a matter of putting the back on oh and because I mentioned before there was no screws with this I put all uh, all T10 screws uh, that come off like the Les Pauls and, and future guitars after that. Now I will say some explorers have the um, T10 Torx bits, but a lot of them have just the standard Phillips bit heads. It's kind of nice to know, like, without looking at serials and stuff, how to know like what generation the guitar was. And that's generally like, does it have color coded ribbon cables? Does it have a Phillips heads? Does it have Torx bits? It could easily be where it was manufactured. I'm sure one factory wasn't the only factory in the world making these things. But the consistency is pretty great where I kind of feel like there maybe only was one factory making these things. And if not, their quality control was like super high. Something that I don't think people talk about it when it comes to Guitar Hero. Like, yeah, they had a great run there for like seven years. Not even like, dang, like let's say five years. They had a great run there for like five years. Um, and in all of that, they just, they cared about quality. And I'm done. Turned out pretty good. Um, the whammy itself, I actually really liked that I painted it because even though it wasn't in that bad of shape, it just, it was more like hazy, especially the little, the, the nub up there. It was really hazy, so I figured paint it, clear it paint the the whammy part itself clear it painted the um the pick guard which i personally think all explorers should have a black pick guard unless it's like a different color but you got your black d-pad your black buttons you got your strum bar your black whammy and then you have a white pick guard so it's like it just looks much better i don't want to touch that it looks much better when it's black it just it does it stands out more it looks way better so yeah, um, I'm very happy with this. I'm hopefully the the customer is very happy. Uh, that's really all I can say. I mean, I'm gonna have to go through my. I usually do like two to four hours of testing with this one because I didn't replace the strum bar. I'm gonna probably push it a little bit to the four hour mark. And also, I love Explorers. I I feel they have the best frets. Um, because unlike the other ones, since I play Lefty and this person plays Lefty as well. Um, it's a, it's a completely symmetrical fret. It, it's not like the other ones, you know, but overall 10 out of 10 build. I mean, I'm super happy with this. I love that you just plug your USB port in and then, I mean, it's going to do that because I just have it plugged into a charger. So there's no data to it. Uh, but if I had it plugged into the computer, you would obviously see that. 
all the buttons are working, everything is cool and fine. Um, I'll give it, once I'm done playing with it, I'll give it one more cleanup just to get all my, you know, fingerprints and anything off and whatever dust. And then we're going to ship this back to him and uh, hopefully get a good review. So, cool. Uh, appreciate everything, guys, and enjoy me playing it.